Hi, this uh, video is uh, basically concerning uh, how to use uh, the montage for backing tracks. Um, I'm going to start out with what you want as a finished product. And the finished product would be an entire backing track run in uh, MIDI mode, uh, which would be uh, the song, uh, song mode, where you're going to launch a backing track. And so I'm going to use the song uh, How Sweet It Is. So what you do is uh, there are going to be some things in the background. Um, they're going to be vocal cues uh, that tells you where you are in the song. You're going to have a click. And uh, this is for people who kind of already know what they're looking for in uh, routing uh, or a backing track. Also, people are familiar with the montage and how to create a multi uh, where they have drums and bass and everything on different channels. So I'm going to move rather quickly. But first of all, let's uh, have a look at what the, the end product is here. And uh, this would be launching the track. Intro. One, two, three, four. Now the tracks and the click would be what the band members hear in their ears. Verse one, two, three, four. So the verse one, two, three, four, and the click is what the band members are, will hear, but they will not hear that in the front house. And the reason they won't hear it in the front of the house is because the click and the vocal cues will be routed to the um, uh, auxiliary input, or it'll be routed to a muted channel on the mixing board, and the in-ears will be accessing the song and the triggers. However, the audience is not going to hear that. The audience, what they're going to hear is they're going to actually hear, I'm going to take the click settings, and uh, let's just... Excuse me here. We'll take the click settings and um, we put it at the output, uh, let's say, for example, assignable left. That's a, another assignable output that uh, can be separate. Uh, and that would go to a muted channel on the mixer. And then the uh, um, performance here, uh, the uh, vocal cues, which I'm going to give you a resource uh, here in just a minute. That would be routed to um, the, uh, instead of main out, that would be routed to the uh, assign left. So there's an assignable that's going to carry the click and the vocal cues to the band in ears along with the song as it is. Um, however, the audience is going to hear something different. They're going to hear a little something, uh, well, they'll, they'll basically uh, hear just this. And uh, the guide track and the click will be in the in-ears. So, very cool. And uh, this is an entire song with all of those uh, cues and triggers. So I'm going to put the click back uh, where it would be um, audible for this uh, demonstration. Um, and I'm going to put that same thing on that channel. The vocal cues. I'm going to give you that resource. It's a library resource that you install. And uh, you... Uh, delete and um, so that you can keep room for your libraries and uh, so what I want to first start out is uh, explaining to you a little about uh, the structure of uh, the resources here so first of all we have the vocal cues uh, vocal cues are very important um, this is uh, let me zoom out a little uh, oops wrong way so if you're looking at the keyboard, Traverse, chorus, bridge, last bridge, chorus. So one, two, three, four. These are different keys that I'm hitting. One, two. one, two, three, four. This is verse, chorus, and bridge. all of these carry a different trigger. Six, last end, drums, obey, break, guitar, guitar, key, key break, instant, all, kick it in, record, repeat, tab. So these are notes that you would stick in there. Verse, intro, one. Outro. Uh, these are just uh, vocal cues that you're going to be uh, putting into your track. So we saw, we've seen the finished product. Um, we've seen the extra resource with the vocal cues. Um, first of all, I want to give you a quick reference on how to get your vocal cues. Um, I have them in the description section on the download. <clears throat> and what you can do is go into uh, your utility and uh, 
go into contents, uh, you download your uh, the, what I give you, uh, the library for vocal cues, and uh, it'll be on a USB uh, drive. You stick it in there, and then you click on the USB drive. And so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to load the file. First, I want to see what kind of library I've got. And uh, so I have to have a, a free space for a library to bring in. So once I do that, uh, you know, you might have to delete something and you put it in later uh, just for the sake of getting this uh, vocal cues in there. You'll notice that uh, when you install, uh, when you put in your flash drive, it'll list all your potential libraries for installation. And you'll notice since vocal cues is on your drive that you uh, downloaded, um, you'll notice that it's not amongst your library. So we're going to go ahead and put that one on here. And because it's a small library, it's um, going to load in real fast. And then once that loads in, uh, right before you play it, what I would do is go back to Utility and uh, then go ahead to uh, the Library Import. And the goal is to just go ahead and put it on this uh, machine and be able to install the patch. Uh, let me get uh, in a little closer here. So now you can see that this vocal cues is what I'm going to select. And then down here in the uh, import to user bank, that's what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to import this into user bank. And so it's going to say, do you want to do that? And I say, yes, absolutely. So the cool thing is, is uh, once it's imported into my user bank, I can delete that library that has the vocal cues on it. And so what's very cool about that is uh, you don't have to keep that library because now it exists in the user memory. It's just uh, pulled from the library area of the flash memory to user. And then what you can do is you can actually take your data utility and you can go into your libraries and you can see that it's there. And you've already imported this. So you can actually go ahead and hit this and you can hit delete and that'll free up that library. Only reason I'm not going to do that right now is because this thing takes forever to uh, to get rid of a library. Um, so we're going to pass on that, but I'll do, I'll delete that later. Um, so how do I find the patch? Uh, basically, I just go into category search and let's find that vocal cue resource. Well, since it starts with vocal, let's just go ahead and put down vocal. And there's vocal cues. So there it is. And you can see that uh, we'll just go ahead and zoom out a little so you can see the keys a little bit more. All right. And then uh, so you'll see. Intro, verse, two, four, three, four, four, five, three, six. Last time. A little quiet, but uh, let's just give it a little volume. So. Last time. Uh, so these are, there it is. One, two, three, four. And if you go. So there, there are, uh, that will be yours and you can use that. Now, where that's uh, critical is inside of this um, song that I'm demoing for you. And uh, so here we are in this song and we're going to get to the structure of this. Now that we have that, uh, I've already created this multi and the multi already has uh, your drums, your bass. I have neo soul keys. I've got a piano in there. And then I have, you'll see over here, the vocal cues. And uh, let's see if we can zoom in on that and keep it from going out of focus. Uh, but you might be able to see from here uh, that vocal cues is uh, right here. And that's the one, like, if I, if I select that track and I start it'll be doing all that stuff of course if I select drums you know it's gonna play that well so the first uh, thing you want to get done uh, while i um, trying to and hopefully this is in focus I don't even know let me just see here uh, see if this thing will focus there we go so now you can probably see it a little better sorry about that um, so at any rate uh, so the, the goal here is, is to be able to get this to play uh, an entire track. So what we're going to be doing is freely going back and forth between um, uh, backing track and, uh, I, I mean, between pattern 
and uh, song mode. So what we do is we go ahead and start out and I'm going to make myself uh, a pattern here and we're going to go to play record and I'm going to go into pattern mode. Now I've already created most of this so that we're not spending a bunch of time uh, trying to get this uh, together here. Um, so I have three different uh, patterns. I have scene one, you'll see here, pay attention here, scene one, scene two, scene three. Uh, scene one is the uh, first part of the song, which would be the uh, chorus. And then this is uh, taking the, the chorus and um, uh, at the very end of it, at the eighth measure, you'll hear the trigger. One, two, three, four. Okay, so if I go to, this is a, um, a verse. And then on the last measure, you'll have the one, two, three, four. So it's eight measures. One, two, three, four. And then the pre chorus, scene three. So you have this eight measures. The last measure, I put the one, two, three, four on here. One. So why put the one, two, three, four at the last end of each one of those scenes? Because um, those generally are the times when you're going to have a transition. So I put that vocal cue in there. So we're going to go over to um, uh, Job <clears throat> and show you how I would construct the body of the song. I would create a chain. I'm down here in chain mode. So I create this chain and uh, Basically, I have a chain where it looks like we have the how sweet it is to be loved by you. Then we have a verse. Then we have the pre-chorus, how sweet it is to be loved by you. Another verse, the pre-chorus. Um, and then the solo um, uh, is usually over, um, over the um, uh, verse. Uh, but I'm not making the whole song. It's, this is just to get a point across. So once I have this chain all arranged, uh, this is just going to give you the body of the song. Verse, chorus, pre-chorus, and all those things. Now, songs have uh, a lot of parts to it. There could be eight parts, but to conserve and to free up some uh, ability to do more with this song, what we do is we go ahead and convert to song. So I convert this to a song. Now, I already have a song. I've already done this. But in this case, you would convert that pattern uh, that chain to a song. So once you've done that, then what you do is you can come back to MIDI and this is where I have created, this is before I have created how sweet it is, it will become this. So, so you're going to have the raw song here. Okay. So uh, this is the, the basic body of the song. And, one, two, three, four. and the countdown goes to wherever there's a transition so that your band knows where you are. Okay, so we've gotten all of that. So what we do is we've gotten that. Uh, we're going to actually drag that back in as a major pattern. Uh, so we're, we would start a new song. And so uh, what we generally do is start this. Uh, let's say we have a new pattern. Uh, if we do a new pattern, uh, we would go ahead and bring that in and uh, I'm going to rename it. Uh, I'm just going to call it how because I'm not necessarily going to use this one. I've already created something for you to see, but I just want to show you how this works. Sometimes I get a double character there. We'll just call it how. So then now I'm back in pattern mode. So what I want to do is I want to put this. I have the body of the song on scene one and on scene two and three. Uh, the, the scene two will be the intro, scene three will be uh, the outro, scene four will be the last hit of the song. So, so then basically what I do is I go into job uh, and then I'm going to grab that song. I'm going to take the song event, I'm going to drag it into here and I'm going to put it into the pattern one, uh, uh, I mean how. And it, this is going to be scene one. So scene one is the body of the song. And I want it to be the entirety of that song. So we're going to make sure that we catch all the, uh, all the measures of that song. Get phrase from song. 
So it's going to be all the tracks. We're going to bring that thing in here. And there we go. So what we basically have now is we've pulled back in that song into pattern uh, mode. And uh, now the song is a pattern and we can now put in the intro, outro, and final hit with the vocal cues. And uh, the cool thing about this is you can take the time to uh, record, let's say for example we're on uh, uh, number one here and, uh, and I need to put in like uh, we have a verse that's coming up. Um, so uh, if we do this That's my bad. I should have gone here. So what I wanted to do is I want this to announce where we are in the song. Okay, so uh, let me see where we are. Um, let's try this again. Oh, there we go. Hold on a minute. Let me make sure we're not on replace. Uh, you don't want to do that. Uh, you want to make sure that you're on overdub. Uh, so we want to go ahead and uh, take this off for a minute. Uh, we want to do undo media record. That's my cat. Sorry, guys. She's very, very hungry, and she's very, very old. So, uh, anyway, so we have this, and we're going to go in here. And uh, we have it on overdub, which is very important. So now what I want to do is I want to put in the vocal cues. Intraverse. Wow. Um, hold on a minute. we got to deal with this. Darn cat. Okay, so uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, we want to put in. Okay, so we want what we want to do is verse, chorus. we want to put in those things verse and chorus. We want to add those uh, triggers in uh, for the structure of the song. So we're going into this. Add to your cue track. So then you do that before each one of those one, two, three, fours on that song chain. So um, now what you have is you have that uh, going on here and everything uh, in place. Now a very cool thing about pattern mode that you want to focus on, see where it says verse one, two, three, four. Okay, so let's say for example, I didn't get that right. If you want to... Um, if you want to erase that, the cool thing about this is uh, that if you, let's say you made a mistake and um, you need to get rid of that, First. you put it in the wrong place. Pattern mode is great because you'll notice if you hit shift, um, shift here, you can hold down where I hit the wrong note. Now I got rid of that verse because I, I put verse in the wrong place. And that's just holding down shift and hitting the note that uh, you hit wrong. So uh, we'll zoom out and just give you a gander on what that looks like. Uh, excuse me. So if I go ahead and I hit a wrong uh, note, first let's record it. Okay, let's say I hit the verse at the wrong place, darn it. So if I'm in pattern mode, not in song mode, if I do that, I can hold down shift and hold down the wrong note. And it'll delete that. One, two, three. So that's a cool feature. Okay, so now that you have that all set, um, what we're going to be doing is... Uh, uh, adding in to our song. Uh, we have the body of the song, that would be scene one. So uh, I'm just going to call up uh, one of the patterns uh, that I have already done. Um, how sweet it is, trig. Now what this is, is I have uh, the, um, the body of the song, which would be scene one. The intro of the song, which is scene two. The outro of the song, which is scene three, 
and the last hit, which is scene four, which would sound something like this. I'll go through each of the part. Intro, one, two, three, four. So then it goes to one, but let's just say we're at the end of the song. So this is going to be the end of the song. And one, two, three, four. So I don't know if you noticed the scene changes. So uh, as you saw, is the three is the outro, four is the end. You have the vocal cues that it's a cue track, and you have the click that's all going at the same time. Once you've done all that, we go into job. Um, once you've done all that, we go into job, create a chain. Here we have the intro, which is scene two, the body of the song, which is scene one, the outro, which is scene three, and the final hit, which is scene four. Once we are done, we convert that all to a song. Now I've already done that. I hit convert. This is what you would be left with. You'd be left with an entire track here that would be how sweet it is and um, when you combine all of those it would be this and then so once you're getting ready to uh, launch your track that would be how sweet it is with the triggers and then so let's say for example you're in front of your crowd hey ladies and gentlemen we're getting ready to play something you know and you just say hey all right um, and then you hit this and your band's hearing this intro one two Three, four. And the thing is, can I play along with it? Sure. Sure, I can. First, one, two, three, four. So, that's uh, the entire backing track. And then, let's say it goes through this whole thing. Uh, and you're on your outro. And one, two, three, four. So that's an entire backing track. So it just goes. So if you're wondering where you are in the song, one, two, three, four. that's an entire backing track with cue tracks. And as I said before, you can route the click and the cue track to an assignable to a channel on the mixing board and then that goes to the in-ears only and the house hears just your music. The cool thing about it is, is let's say you have a band member that calls in sick uh, or maybe can't make the gig and uh, then so you say, oh, uh, that's too bad and let's say it is your um, your drummers, are the, your drummers there, um, uh, your bass player is not there, the keyboardist is there. So then basically whoever's there you mute, whoever's not there you don't mute. And then so all you do is you're just going like this. Intro, one, two, three, four. So the rest of the band is playing along with it. They hear the, cu they have, they hear the click and the bass will play along with it. Verse, one, two, three, four. So the cue track will tell the band where we are. Now, of course, you know, let's say your drummer uh, is there, but your keyboards can't make it. Your drummer can be playing along with it. One, two, three, four. And they'll know exactly where everything is. So that's kind of, uh, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, one of the things that I didn't do was uh, what do we do with that library that we downloaded and we installed. So what I would do is I would just go ahead and take that uh, data utility, take that library, um, and we're going to get rid of it because you've already put this queue, the, the queue tracks inside of your uh, machine. It's in the user memory, so you can just delete that. And uh, even though you deleted it, um, provided you use the, I usually encourage you to delete the library <clears throat> before building uh, your multi with the Q-Track on it. That would be my opinion. 
Um, and uh, that's basically how you can write a bunch of songs and uh, use them as backing tracks uh, using the resource that I indicated here, the Q-Track. And uh, that should uh, hopefully help you guys out.